In the second part of the introduction, I would like to parameterize the cycle properly and uh, perform a first simulation. It is clear that in order to perform a simulation, we will need certain boundary conditions represented by fluid parameters at certain points in our cycle. Let's start out and parameterize some inlet conditions for our cooling water. We will use the component 1 the boundary input value let's say our cooling water has one bar of pressure and 20 degrees of uh, temperature at the inlet and therefore we have parameterized our cooling water we also need a live steam mass flow, which we will parameterize with a component 33. And let's say we have 120 kg per second. And we also need a condenser back pressure, which we will specify with a component 46 so we will have a condenser back pressure of let's say 50 millibar we also have other parameters specified by our components Let's have a look at our steam generator. You will see that our nominal live steam pressure is 160 bar, our live steam temperature is 520, and we have also the reheat temperatures and certain pressure drops here. So this means that we will have an outlet pressure at pin 2 of 160 bar and a temperature of 520 degrees Celsius. Those are basically the concepts how to specify parameters in our cycle. We have component 1 available for fluids entering our cycle. We have component 46 uh, which is a single value input. As you can see we have different options what kind of values we would like to specify here and component 33 which is basically a general input value just like component 1 but can be added at any point in our cycle a difference between the component 33 and 1 in comparison to component 46 is its ability to specify material fractions and we will use this ability in future lessons uh, in order to specify, for instance, the composition of the fuel used in our boiler. Those are the parameters we needed. And we can start a simulation by pressing the simulate button. You can find it here. It's a small turbine I will just click on the button and you see we have an error message that indicates that some input data is missing let's have a look at it what you see here is the error analysis window and you will see that we are missing some pressure on the object water underscore 2 which is exactly this highlighted line. And here it is the same. So basically what happened uh, was that we specified an inlet pressure of one bar and no outlet pressure behind the pump. So this is something we should do now. I can just take this component 46 and by Ctrl C, 
Control V, copy and paste it into my model. Let's start the simulation again. Now the error message changed. We have now a finished calculation with errors. Let's take a look at the errors again. The error analysis window opens and it says that we have an overdetermination and pressure in this line. I can also scroll through the box and see, okay, this is the steam line. So we have an overdetermination in pressure. Uh, this is basically an error we have to take care of first. So one rule is always take care of the overdetermination errors first. Uh, let's have a look at this line. We have a mass flow specified here and an outlet pressure of the steam generator. It's 160 bar. And the only other component connected to this line is the turbine. So let's have a look at the inlet pressure specification of the turbine. And we will see that the inlet pressure handling, FP1N, is specified as P1 calculated from P1N set. So this is P1N set. And this is the source of our error because uh, this steam line here now gets double information on the pressure. The steam generator says that the pressure is 160 bar. The steam turbine expects uh, inlet pressure of 120 bar. So what I will do now will be to say that the inlet pressure is given from outside. Let's perform a simulation one more time. We have a successful calculation with warnings. And Epsilon asks us whether we want to take over the nominal values or not. What this exactly means will be the subject of a later lesson. Today I would like just to accept this question. Okay, so let's have a look at the warnings now, because what we would like to achieve would be a simulation without an error and without a warning. We can open our error analysis window from the calculation menu. We have an overdetermination in mass flow on one of those lines. So one more time, if I scroll through the errors, I will see there are two lines which generate this warning. And you see we have a very small deviation between the two values specified for these lines. So this is basically a problem which occurs due to the fact that we have a closed loop cycle. You can imagine that each component incorporates an equation which says that all incoming mass flows should be equal to all outgoing mass flows. So if we have a closed cycle, the definition of the outlet mass flow will meet again. We can solve this problem by adding a separator component into our cycle. You see the pins are twisted in the wrong way now, so we can for instance, 
mirror this component vertically and fit it into our cycle. Let's parameterize the separator correctly. It will be a mass flow separator, which means that this component allows us to have different mass flows on both sides of the component. We can basically deactivate our mass balance. Our warnings are solved now. We have a successful calculation within 17 iterations and 106 milliseconds. One more time, we take over the nominal values. Uh, before I end this second in introduction video, I would like to show you the equation toolbar, which shows us what kind of equations were solved during our simulation. So we collect the data, simulate, and you will see which equations are solved by the component during the simulation. So you see we have the mass balance here. We have the energy balance of our turbine. The energy balance of our condenser. So all the equations solved by Epsilon can be found here. Let's sum up what we have learned in this second video. We learned that we can specify parameters in our cycle using component 1, 33 and 46, or that parameters can be specified within our components, like in the case of our steam generator. We also learned about our error analysis tool and the fact that we have to solve overdetermination errors first. In the next lesson, we will learn how to display the results of our simulation.